When we talk about an increasing reliance on social adaptation for humans, or an increasing importance of the human social niche, one of the things we're talking about is the theory of mind that humans have. Adapting to a social niche doesn't just mean getting used to having more people, or having larger population size as we move through the Pleistocene. It means fundamentally reshaping the ways in which humans interact, the way in which humans understand other humans. And this has a lot to do with the theory of mind, the notion that we have this mental construct that allows us to interpret the world around us, including other humans within it. Humans have a very well-developed theory of mind, in the sense that we have a very advanced form of understanding not just ourselves, but other people as individuals just like us, with the same intentions, the same motivations, the same desires. This fundamentally reshapes how we're able to communicate with other people, and how we even structure our own communication. The fact that I can recognize you as another individual with the same kinds of feelings that I do, and also recognize that some third person will view our interactions in the same way that they might view their own interactions, and be able to interpret and judge and figure out what we're thinking and why we're making the decisions we are, is a really important concept, because it changes the way we interact as individuals and as groups of individuals. It allows us to begin to develop deeper relationships, but also more complex relationships, where individuals can take on a different series of roles. Every person I encounter, in other words, isn't simply another person. They're persons with different attributes associated with them. Maybe it's a closeness or a proximity to me in terms of their degree of relationship, my degree of familiarity with them, my trust with them. Maybe it's a sense of sort of where they sit within a hierarchy and their relative position of power that then differentially changes how I interpret their actions. But the development of increased cognitive capabilities in humans in the Pleistocene, corresponding with this larger brain size, also reflects again increasing cognitive priorities and increasing ability to recognize different individual characteristics of people. This heightened theory of mind is one of the most interesting human unique characteristics. We have a much more developed theory of mind than do our closest living ape relatives. And this is a characteristic that Miller developed in the Pleistocene, particularly in the second half of the Pleistocene, when we begin to see evidence of increasing population size, especially rapidly increasing brain size entering into the range of modern humans today. So thinking about other humans, not simply as another creature on the landscape, but as something that's fundamentally very much like me, or like you, is a big change in our evolutionary history, and one that has profound implications for how we interpret and understand human behavior, and the pattern of variation that we see within and between populations in the Pleistocene.